Hey guys, welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson and in the run-up to your final GCSE exams of course it's really really important to ensure that you are prepared for the language paper one exam. Now what Stacey and I want to do is to go over the top three mistakes that GCSE students make in the language paper one exams especially in section A and how you can correct these mistakes okay so that you try and avoid these common errors that drive examiners crazy. So Stacey what is the first mistake so, that students make? The first thing guys that we encourage you not to to do in question two, which is a language question, is to start using the wrong technique. So labeling something a simile if it's not, or using the wrong um, like adverb, noun, adjective. We have to be accurate in this response. So you're gonna have to be sure that you know how um, to label the things that are in the extract. And if you don't know, don't label it. And I'm actually curious to know your take on repetition as a structural technique. So there's often a little bit of confusion as to whether repetition counts as language or structure. I'm going to sit on the fence here because I think it will answer both. So if I'm in a language, if I'm on a question two and something is repeated a couple of times, I will refer to it as, as a language device as repetition. But it's very, very powerful in question three as a structural device um, in terms of what we think the author and the writer is trying to do. Okay, so aside from the question of repetition, this is what you should do instead for question number two. Make sure you mention language techniques when you're picking out quotations from the little text box that you're given, make sure you mention stuff like alliteration, simile, sibilance, oxymoron, onomatopoeia, hyperbole. All of these language devices are really, really important, but of course also remember the third bullet point, which is to do with sentence forms, right? An easy way to address sentence forms is to either refer to a declarative sentence, which is just any sentence that states a fact, feeling or mood, or you can say this short sentence, this long sentence, okay? That addresses the sentence form bullet point for question number two. So what's the second mistake that students make? Number two for don'ts is question three. So this is your structural question. What you will find, guys, is that actually students forget to use a quotation because they think, well, it's not actually language-based. But if you're telling me that there's a structural device being employed or you want me to focus at the beginning of the extract, give me the reference that I, that, that I am focusing on as a reader or that you are telling me to focus on as a reader. So support what you're seeing structurally with the reference you are referring to. It, obviously, it, it's kind of um, a better response in that way. And you need evidence as to what you're seeing. And Oh, here we go. We hate, and I speak for all English teachers here, it makes the reader want to read on because it doesn't, let me tell you. Any person that's written a book wants you to read it. So you need better responses here about what the reader feels, how the reader responds to that, not about whether we do or don't want to read. Okay, and this is what you should do instead for question number three of language paper one. Make sure you mention, you mention the structural technique, right? If it's beginning, middle, or end. If it's flashing back, it'll flash back, flash forward. Zooming in, zooming out, if there's a sudden or um, gradual introduction of a character, all of these are structural devices. Mention that, but you need to also tie it with a quotation. Don't just mention it to the beginning or the middle or the end. You need to use a quote to support that, okay? And this is for question number three. So what's the final mistake that students tend to make for this paper? Question four, guys, we need to spend a lot of time on it. It's 20 marks. And what's happening is we, as a collective, are misreading the question. We, we hear the word evaluate and we think, oh my God, what do I do? And remember, don't misread it in terms of what the examiner is asking you to do because the examiner is asking you to do what they've been asking you to do through the entire paper. So what should they do? Okay, so for question number four, this is a student statement. What you should do is analyze the statement, okay? And a really easy way of analyzing and evaluating is literally using the skills that you have shown for question two and three, where you're mentioning, for example, if the student statement says, you know, um, this shows how Hartop is a really horrible, cruel father, for example, you then say, okay, actually this adjective or this simile illustrates how he is indeed a cruel, horrible father, or this, um, you know, this shift to Alice's character, right, which is structure. This illustrates that maybe Hartop might not be as cruel, right? Obviously, you can also balance the argument or simply just agree with the student statement, okay? But just make sure as part of your analysis when you're evaluating to what extent you agree with the student statement, you're referring to language and structure, which are skills that you already know from questions two and three. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in to watch this revision video. Don't forget that on Stacy's channel, we're gonna be doing the top three mistakes that students make when it comes to the language paper two exam and how you can avoid it. So make sure you head over to her channel to watch that video. Thank you.